synchronizing video clips to drop zones. I have this 24 second title with two drop zones. The first drop zone appears at 6 seconds into the title and the second drop zone appears at 12 seconds. A lot of long evolving templates have drop zones that appear at various times. You can see that the first drop zone appears on exactly frame 180 in this 30 frames per second project and the second drop zone appears on exactly frame 360. The progress bar keeps track of the elapsed time and frame number under the playhead. This is a super simple way of maneuvering in a template. That's the setup. I'm going to assume you know the ins and outs and inherent problems with the drop zones fairly well and focus on how to synchronize your media to a drop zone's appearance, or life, in the template using SC Retimer. Place your media over the template, in this case a title, and snap the beginning to the beginning of the title. Make a note of the length of the clip which is highlighted in yellow under the playhead clock. Type Command R to activate the Retime Editor, grab the edge control and drag out the length of the clip. It does not matter if you go past the end of the title, Add SC Retimer to the clip. Dismiss the dashboard, you will not need it. You do not need to set the clip length parameter either, you'll just need the playhead parameter. Go down to the compositing section and take the opacity down enough so you can see details in the title template beneath. Drag the playhead until you see the beginning of the drop zone you are working with. I want this clip to delay about 1 quarter seconds before it begins to play to give the user a chance to get a fix on it. You can set a keyframe on the playhead parameter, although I didn't hear, I'll get back to this. Move the playhead about the length you noted the original clip was before using the retiming editor and increase the playhead parameter in SC Retimer to 100%. Note that sometimes 100% will wrap around to the first frame again. So back off to 99.99% .99 or a little lower, it really isn't going to make very much difference if you're one or two frames off. In this video, I had to go back to the start point and set the playhead parameter to zero. I had the option to keep the end part a still frame, but opted to add a reverse play instead. Moving the playhead to the end of the retimed clip and setting the SC Retimer playhead parameter back to zero. Skimming through it, I like the effect. When you've finished keyframing the clip, go back to the compositing section and reset the opacity to 100%. Create a compound clip. This is necessary because adding effects to clips in the storyline and using them as sources for drop zones frequently results in a still frame being used. Sources from projects and events always animate. So that's the way to go. Give your compound clip a name and save it to your project. To save time here, I'm going to turn right around and break apart clip items and work on the timing of the same clip for the second drop zone. Reduce the opacity again and reset the SC Retimer playhead parameter. Repeat the same actions as before for the second drop zone's appearance. Create a new compound clip and save that with a different name to your project. Go back and select your drop zone template. Select the first drop zone and from the project browser, try to select the first frame. You can tell you're on the first frame when you see the film strip guide on the left edge of the clip. Apply clip. We'll skim across the template to see how we did. Nailed it. 
Add the second drop zone compound clip. Play. If you need to make minor adjustments, you can double click on the compound clip in the project browser and open it in the timeline. Make any adjustments you need. When you return to the template in the storyline, the changes will be apparent. When you're finished, you can simply uncheck the progress bar effect and the effect inspector.